Uh, good morning, everybody. It is good to see you on this Tuesday morning, day two of our prayer and fasting focus, and uh, super excited to hang out with you guys. I hope that you have your coffee ready. Um, maybe you spent a few moments preparing your heart for today, getting ready for the day. Hi, Sarah. Good to see you. Uh, Shailene, nice to have you with us. 1982 Dodger fan. So cool. Monica, great to see you guys. Hope you have your coffee. Got my coffee this morning. I'm missing my Clobo buddy. Uh, our little, uh, we call her a Bishipu, a Bishan Poodle. Um, she decided to sleep in this morning, so <clears throat> it's all good. I hope you guys are uh, ready for the day. Hey, Mary, good to see you. Hope you're having a great day. Great start to the day. We're going to have a good conversation. Oh, my goodness. Hey, Liz, God bless you. God bless you. I like your address, Nanabot, because that just says everything that you are. Your great grandmother and loving, loving your kids, loving your grandkids. Um, so cool. I have uh, I've been working on our house and sitting in our uh, what we call a playroom or the just a relax room, kind of our uh, theater room, and it's a uh, it's a little cool this morning. It's a little chilly. And so I'm feeling nice and warm and <clears throat> sweats. And I should call this morning a, a coffee and sweats morning. I don't know. That sounds a little weird. Hey, Brittany. Good to see you. Great to have you join us. I hope you're having a good morning so far. And uh, But so many good things going on. So many challenging things going on. Um, gentleman in our church is going through some difficult times with his wife in the hospital and uh, figuring out what the next steps are for her rehabilitation. She she broke her pelvis as she fell at home and so there's some uh, big concerns about being at home and all those kinds of things. So pray for me today. We're going to try and help him find a nice place for them uh, to find some uh, short-term care for her. Uh, so please pray for them. Um, but really good things. Um, it was so cool. Uh, there were some really great experiences on Sunday where uh, some people in the church invited some friends, and those friends showed up. It's awesome. When you invite, they show up. Hey, Byron, Caleb, um, great to see you guys. Hope you're having a good morning. Uh, Caleb down in San Diego, God bless you. Byron on your way to work maybe just getting started love you guys so cool I want to pray a little bit more this morning so uh, we'll take some time to uh, go through this passage of scripture um, I mentioned the scripture on Sunday again we're in 21 days of prayer and fasting I hope you had I had a good first day of fasting um, and, and I know we're not supposed to talk about it, but hi, Victoria. Great to have you. Taylor, glad you're here. Rebecca, I know we're not supposed to talk about fasting. You know, it's it's not about the, the talking about it. It's the bragging about it. It's kind of trying to become noticed about it. But um, I don't know about you guys, uh, what you're giving up. Um, hi, Linda. It's great to have you with us. Um, I don't know what you're giving up for fasting, but, um, you know, always just whatever that is, it doesn't have to be food. It can be, you know, whatever you spend a lot of time on, um, whatever kind of you draws your attention away to something else. So maybe it's in today's world, it's social media, um, scrolling, all those kinds of things that can be a big distraction. So um, whatever you give up, replace it with something that is going to draw you into God. And that is the big thing and it and what it says is that I'm Lord I am serious I'm I'm serious about seeing God move at our church I'm serious about seeing hearing your voice and hear being led and guided by your spirit 
God, I want to know you more and I want to be in your will. And um, so when we're fasting and praying, we're fasting and praying that God would just have his way in our lives. And that's a, that's a big deal. And so, um, and God recognizes that. God recognizes that. And it's just uh, uh, amazing um, what we can, can experience. So Philippians 4, 7, when it talks about prayer, I mentioned this on Sunday. We're going to break it down uh, to, to a, a greater degree today um, in, this, in this time. But Philippians 4, 7 says, Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Um, that, that, that is a, a simple breakdown part um, where we're just to be uh, excited about what God is doing. And one of the things I've noticed on my videos is, uh, in this live stream is I'm saying I'm super excited. Um, I really am in, in the sense that I'm anticipating God doing something significant. And most importantly, if each one of us, you and me, grow in our relationship with God, that's enough. That's 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 the, the significant part of that is to grow and become a, a better follower of, of Christ, become more like Christ in everything that we're doing and saying. So praying and fasting and, and talking about prayer on uh, in the morning like this is a, a significant way to start our day. But um, when we rejoice, we're rejoicing in in such a way as to to get excited to get excited about what God is doing and anticipate something significant. So we can get excited. I, you know, the Seahawks won this last weekend. They won in the fourth quarter and a big touchdown at the end of the game. And, and they won, um, which is not uncommon, uh, unlike the Packers, uh, Rebecca. Hope you don't click out. Uh, but um, <laughs> we, we have uh, so, so many good reasons to rejoice and so many good reasons to uh, have a, a a heart that says, God, I'm so excited about you. And we wake up with that um, um, thinking and feeling. And we, we, we start with that. Then it says, let your gentleness, gentleness be evident to all. That means simply let your humility um, <clears throat> be evident. Don't, don't be proud. Don't be braggadocious like I just was. Um, but, but simply um, <clears throat> be humble and uh, <clears throat> And, and and not brag, uh, not not out like the the Pharisees and the Sadducees were on the corner where they're trying to show their 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 uh, their religiosity. Uh, that's really powerful. And then the Lord is near. Um, that's He's right here. He's right here. He's right here with you and me talking. And uh, that's what we, we need to rejoice about. He's here. He's not. He's not just near. He's here. And he's in our presence. He's living inside of us. He's. Uh, a part of our day, a part of our life, a part of who we are anymore as, as uh, people of faith. And then it says, and it gets down to the the, the meat of uh, the meaning of everything. Hi, Lizzie, 86, it's good to have you here. Um, it says, do not be anxious about anything. Do not be anxious about anything. And this this idea of anxiety is, means simply do not be pulled in a whole bunch of directions. Now I'm talking to busy people here. I know a lot of you. And we are pulled in every direction. I'm pulled in my in my family situation. I'm pulled in my ministry situation, in my work. I'm pulled as a professor. I'm a, a, a teaching in, in a university. All these things pull me in different directions. And if I let them, I can get really anxious about all of them. I can become overwhelmed. I can be pulled in many directions. And really, the whole idea of prayer and fasting is to get single-minded, to, to understand exactly where we're going, exactly what we should be doing, exactly what, what God wants us to do. And when we get that clarity, the anxiety goes away. We're not pulled in every direction. We're pulled in God's direction. And that's the goal. And that's the purpose. So don't be anxious. Don't be pulled in so many directions that it confuses us. It can, it controls us. It begin, it consumes us. That's not the goal. The goal is to be, um, to not be anxious about anything, but in every situation by prayer and petition, this is Philippians four. Uh, we're in verse six now. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. There's some interesting things here. Prayer, in this context, is considered to be adoration, 
devotion or worship to God. This is where we start our prayer, our prayer life. And, and really, truly, every, every prayer that we start should start with, God, I thank you for being so amazing. I thank you for being so great. I thank you for being my salvation, my fortress, my strength, my, my everything. God, you are everything to me. And when we recognize that, we start with faith. We start with a confidence that we're not praying to some empty entity. We're praying to a God who is capable of hearing our prayers. And so we start with adoration, praise, and devotion and worship. And then we go on to um, petition, which means simply an intense asking. I was, I was reading about this uh, earlier in a commentary, and, and one of the key notes of this is that we are, we're, we're coming to God with intensity. We're coming to God with seriousness. We're coming to God with this uh, uh, boldness that, that says, I believe, I know, and this, this thing that I'm bringing to God it has meaning and value and importance. And so it's an intense asking. I like Hebrews 5, 7. It says, during the days of Jesus' life on earth, he offered up prayers and petitions with fervent cries and tears to the one who could save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverent submission. Jesus, Jesus was praying with fervent cries and tears. This was his prayer in the garden. He was, he was serious. He, you know, not, not my will, but yours be done. God, take, take control of this situation. I trust you. All these things. Lord, I need you to speak to me about <clears throat> the direction of my life. I need you to speak to me about Achieve the Mission. I need you to speak to me about everything that God is doing in our lives. And when we come with that fervent crying and, and, and prayers and desperate needs, um, uh, my little grandson, Liam, is sick right now. And I, I've been catching myself, and, and my other grandkids have been sick, and I've been catching myself going, God, just bring healing to their little bodies and, and help them. That's that fervency. And we need to pray and and but worship God and then we need to petition him and go after it with requests. And then it says, and, but in every situation by prayer, petition with thanksgiving, bring your request to God, present your request to God. And that thanksgiving is just what it says. There's no other meaning, just thanks God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God, that you heard my prayers. That's the, the beauty of praying to God is that we, we can have a confidence that he hears us. And lastly, um, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. The peace of God. This is, again, a single-minded kind of type of prayer. This is a single-minded of, of, of the ability to come to God and say, God, I have every confidence that you are going to take care of the needs, the worries, the anxieties that I am I'm placing on you. It says, D um, don't be anxious about anything. The only way not to be anxious is to have confidence that God's in control. The only way to be not to be anxious, the only way not to worry is to uh, release those worries to him, trust him, and he will carry your burden. He will carry those challenges. And then we can have that peace. I like what one person said. It, it guards the two places where anxiety starts, and that's in our heart and in our mind. So peace guards our heart and our minds. And when it starts, it, when we pray, and we pray about everything, not just the big things, but the little things, when we pray about everything, then that creates a shield around our heart, around our mind, and we have a peace that passes understanding. And that's the value of praying and doing what we're doing in praying and fasting. So I wanna encourage you guys, don't worry about anything pray about everything. And when we do, we can take it to a God who is capable of doing far above what we could ever ask or think. And so today I want to start that our day with prayer. Start our day with an intensity of saying, God, meet us where we're at. Help us to understand your will for today. Help us, God, to not walk in our own path, but walk in the path that you set before us. Help us, God. And so let's begin to pray right now. Father God, I thank you so much for each person that's on this live stream today. Those that are uh, live, those that will watch it later, I pray in the name of Jesus that you uh, begin to work in us. God, we first begin with praise and, and 
worship you. We thank you, God, that you are an almighty God, that you are all-knowing, that you are ever-present, that you are all-powerful. We thank you, God, that you're capable of doing far and above what we could ever ask or think. Our imaginations cannot contain your capabilities. And Lord, I just pray right now in the name of Jesus for each person. We come with needs. We come, Lord, uh, I, I know that I will spend time with a man today who needs guidance and wisdom and favor for the care for his wife and himself. And I pray for wisdom for that. I pray, God, that you meet us at our point of need. I pray for all my grandkids today that you would heal their bodies and make them well in the name of Jesus, that you take my family and you touch their lives and minister to their needs, God. Meet them at their point of needs today. Touch their lives, touch their marriages, touch my marriage. Bless our families, God. Bless every family that's represented here today in the name of Jesus. God, I believe that you're doing something significant. I believe you're doing something powerful. I believe that you want to uh, minister at, to the needs of our church. And I pray, Father, that journey would be a light on a hill. I pray that you would help us to achieve the mission of entering into the journeys of those who have yet to discover your love, grace, and forgiveness. And help us make disciples, God. We want to be a church that is effective and is flowing with the power of your Holy Spirit in our lives. In the name of Jesus, we pray that you raise up a revival amidst our, our, our people, a revival of passion, a revival of commitment, a revival of sacrifice, a revival of, of love for the people around us in our community. Lord, help us not to live our faith just inside the walls, but outside the walls of your church. We thank you and we praise you for that, God. We believe that we can be the church in a community and make a difference amongst 850,000 people. Lord, that sounds like too big of a number. But Lord, we realize you care for every one of those numbers because every number has a name. And I pray for your Holy Spirit to help us reach and minister to the, to, to the people who have yet to discover you. Lord, give us opportunities. Help us to find the key to the heart of Ventura County in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray for other churches that you would help them rise up as well. Because we realize, Lord, that there's not a, enough churches to contain the entire county if they were all to, to find you today. Lord, I pray that you help us. Help us all, God, to raise up and to rise up out of the, the, the ashes of complacency, the ashes of, uh, uh, of um of discouragement and help us to rise up with excitement, to rejoice in the Lord always. And Lord, to pray and to pray with earnestness and to believe that you are able to do above and beyond what we could ever ask or think. And thank you for that, God. We thank you today. We, we come with thanksgiving, believing that you are capable. Lord, we don't have a need to worry today. Whether it's our bills, whether it's our kids, whether it's our grandkids, whether it's our, our families, our workplace, our coworkers, our neighbors, uh, people in our church that need your help, we've prayed today that you would meet needs and we believe it and we thank you for it. And God, I give you all the praise, all the glory and know that you're going to do something significant in our lives today. And we pray this in the powerful name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, <laughs> I don't know about you, but I've met with God. I've met with God. I, oh, what a beautiful moment. And I hope that you guys uh, have that perfect peace, Byron. Thank you, Lord, for your perfect peace. I love that statement. Thank you so much. And let's go today with the peace of God that has shrouded our minds and our hearts. It's guarding us today. So we have peace knowing that God's in control. He's got all of our needs and he will take uh, our, our lives and, and use them. For the kingdom's sake. Amen? Amen. Well, I love you guys. I hope you have a wonderful day. Uh, we'll keep praying and asking God to do great things in our lives. God bless you as you fast. And uh, I hope and pray that as you fast, you just totally connect with everything that God is. And uh, it draws you into time with God. All right? God bless you. Have a wonderful day. We'll talk to you tomorrow morning at 7 o'clock.